Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the full moon in Capricorn at one degree and seven minutes on June 21st, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us start to connect to a broader, much wider perspective of the cosmos and what influences us on this full moon from a galactic perspective. So welcome. You'll receive three energetic themes that I've pulled out from the full moon chart. And also at the end, I have some questions for you. Should you want to integrate this full moon and Capricorn energy some more? So welcome. This full moon is a resilient one. We have the moon at one degree of Capricorn opposite the sun at one degree of Cancer. And here in the first decan, the first 10 degrees of a sign is really a very physical, hands-on, uh, in-the-face uh, type of energy that is felt in our physical body or also in the earth. And here we have uh, the full moon is opposite Orion Betelgeuse at 29 degrees of Gemini. And I'll talk more about Orion Betelgeuse in the first theme coming up. I should also mention that this full moon is in Capricorn. And also the next full moon we're going to have on July 21st is also in Capricorn, but at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So we have a highlight here on the sign of Capricorn between these full moons uh, over the next four weeks. And Capricorn is primarily, well, let's say between 10 degrees and 29 degrees is uh, occupied in the sky by the constellation of Lyra. And we're going to talk more about the Lyra constellation in theme three coming up. The ruler of this full moon is Saturn, and Saturn is now at 19 degrees of Pisces, conjunct asteroid Nessus at this time. And asteroid Nessus is associated with ancestral karma and bringing up deep emotional wounds to be seen. And Saturn here in Pisces is really advising us to go within, to allow this ancestral uh, influence uh, come up so that we can uh, get to know it, get to know what it's all about and separate out our own karma, our own individual karma with what is brought in from our ancestral line. So this is an important message. And here uh, at this full moon, it's getting highlighted by Saturn. This full moon is speaking about that protective shield that we need to be completely safe in witnessing our deepest emotional wounds within ourselves. And this process is Saturn's uh, gift to us at this time, because out of that contemplation and witnessing within, we can start to step out into our true self, releasing what is not ours, what is not um, ours to carry anymore. And sometimes we can feel that we are bound by our ancestral heritage and how it uh, sometimes limit us. And now Saturn is really advising us here to separate out what is that ancestral uh, heritage that is holding us down sometimes, and what do we want to keep of our ancestral heritage as we move forward? Because ultimately, Saturn wants us to increase our self-acceptance for who we truly are. Through developing more inner strength, we have the courage to step out and stand up for what we believe in. That helps us to become so unthreatened and steady 
within so that we can step out in integrity and release whatever has been holding us down, uh, whether it's how we identify ourselves as a human and who we truly are. Maybe we are living with um, limited images and perceptions of who we truly are, who we think we are. In the midst of this, we find that uniqueness about ourselves, that inner strength builds from within so that we can uh, build on our unique gifts and talents that we may discover <laughs> as we sit with ourselves in stillness. And as we are letting go of anything that has held us down, including ancestral karma. At 19 degrees here, we are at the tail end of the second deacon, which is the mental domain. So we're culminating something about our beliefs and our perceptions here. Saturn at 19 degrees conjunct Nessus is a culmination because 19 degrees is at the last tail end of the second deacon. The second deacon is associated with 10 to 19 degrees of each sign. And now also at 19 degrees, Saturn goes retrograde on June 29th. So this is really a highlight point uh, that is important for us to pay attention to. Ultimately, Saturn in Pisces is supporting us to step further into and deeper into our true self. Saturn is inviting us to go within and allowing this process to happen. And it can be a little bit of a process. Now, when Saturn's going to go retrograde between now and November, but then also going direct, uh, hitting 19 degrees of Pisces again on 15th of February, 2025. So when Saturn has... Uh, it reached 19 degrees of Pisces again, this process likely is complete. So that can take a couple of months, but um, now is the time to go within, to unearth this ancestral karma that is highlighted at this full moon. Before we go into the full moon chart, I'd like to share the three energetic themes. The first theme is resilient birth of the true you. And here we're going to talk about the full moon opposite uh, Orion Betelgeuse, but we're also going to talk about the full moon square to Neptune at 29 degrees and also uh, a grand cross that is formed here with the full moon. The second theme is inner spark is strength. And here we're going to talk about Andromeda Mirage. We're going to talk about the Royal Star Regulus and Asteroid Vesta. The third theme is share passions to inspire others. And here we're going to talk about the Lyra constellation and the fixed star Alatfar, and also dwarf planet Quawar and Andromeda Titawin. So let's take a look at the full moon chart next. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There is a link in the description box below. So here we have the full moon chart with the moon there at one degree of Capricorn opposite the sun at one degree of Cancer. And the sun is conjunct Orion Betelgeuse at 29 degrees of Gemini here. We also see Saturn. I highlighted Saturn there conjunct Nessus in retrograde at 19 degrees of Pisces. Let's continue with the first theme, resilient birth of the true you. So here we have the first theme that I've called resilient birth of the true you. And let's first take a look at the square uh, that the moon is making to the supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra, but also a sextile to the Shapley attractor at two degrees of Scorpio conjunct the dwarf planet Haumea at zero degree of Scorpio. So this full moon and the square to the supergalactic center is really an invitation to expand our perspective on relationships. 
um, two degrees of Libra is very much relationship oriented and super galactic center brings in that multidimensional perspective that uh, we also are invited to expand with. Now, the sextile to Shapley Attractor, which is even in magnitude a bigger energy, um, Shapley Attractor is one of the biggest drivers of universal wisdom within the cosmos that we know of. And the Shapley Attractor is that call to integrate uh, more of an expanded perspective, a multidimensional perspective of uh, the unseen. And here, it clearly is an invitation to uh, work with these energies during these uh, full moon, this full moon. We also have a T-square between the full moon, moon and the sun, and the 29 degree Neptune here. Sitting there at the last degree of the zodiac is a highly potent degree point. And Neptune is conjunct, uh, still conjunct Pegasus sheet, the fixed star in the Pegasus constellation. So this T-square is very potent. And I just wanted to point out that there has been a number of squares by personal planets, but also the sun uh, leading up to this full moon. So first we had Venus squaring Neptune on June 16th, and then it was Mercury's turn to square Neptune on June 17th, the day after and then we had the sun squaring Neptune on June 20th. And to top it off here, we are now at the full moon uh, squaring Neptune. <laughs> so these squares to Neptune are really affecting us personally. Both Venus and Mercury are personal planets. Uh, so, and, and the sun, of course, is bringing in that highlight. So these squares to Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces is another highlight of the importance of Neptune's guidance at this time. And conjunct Pegasus sheet, it has to do with our desire for freedom, our desire to step into our true self, our desire to feel free within. And here is a, a very... Um, potent message at this full moon to really harness that because we also have the super galactic center engaged in a grand cross here with Neptune and this is where the uh, bigger perspective when it comes to relationships um, especially for super galactic center to be involved with that magnitude of wisdom that we have access to, to, I want to also add uh, Orion Betelgeuse and the energy associated with Betelgeuse as well to this Grand Cross, because Orion Betelgeuse is associated with energy around resourcefulness, but also very much resilience around achieving what we set out to do. So this Grand Cross is really a invitation to expand our perspective on relationships and our dynamic of how we um, step into our true self, but also remain um, within boundaries and feeling freedom in, inside. So taken together with the full moon here opposite Orion Betelgeuse and also squaring supergalactic center and Neptune at 29 degrees conjunct Pegasus sheet, this overall message has to do with resilience in relationships as we step into uh, our true selves, our true um, energy around how we can build inner strength so I want to show you here Orion constellation, and you may be familiar with the Orion's belt there, the three fixed stars that builds the Orion's belt. But Betelgeuse is uh, at the shoulder position of the raised arm there of the Orion constellation. And it's said also that Betelgeuse is about to go supernova. And uh, we're not talking tomorrow, but um, it, it clearly is showing signs of uh, supernova, which means that um, 
uh, a fixed star is evolving. It's bursting, if we call it that, and uh, transforms. So that's also symbolic of the influence of Orion Betelgeuse on this full moon. So here you can see um, Orion Betelgeuse and tune into that image there as well. So taken together, this grand cross associated with the full moon here, Orion Betelgeuse is inviting us to be very resourceful and resilient in the process of expanding our perspective, particularly when it comes to how we achieve inner freedom, inner strength, but also in perspective to relationships. And so we are invited to look through the mirror of our relationships also to gain more inner strength, because often it is our lessons and teachings that happens through relationships. And the supergalactic center here is that mirror. And it can also be a mirror towards what's the unseen is the multidimensional perspectives of other dimensions, but also other realities. So this Grand Cross is very powerful and is an important uh, highlight at this time. The first theme here is highlighting that process that we're asked to go through, perhaps all the way until February 15th, 2025, when Saturn is back at 19 degrees of Pisces. But it's a bigger perspective that we're working with than what we think it is. So this may also influence the collective. And um, Orion Betelgeuse here uh, is influencing us to be resilient as part of this process. So let's take a look at the second energetic theme next. So here we have the second theme that I've called inner spark is strength. And here I'm going to talk about in a grand earth trine in the very early degrees here, zero to one degrees of the earth signs. So we start with the full moon there at one degree of Capricorn, making a trine to the royal star Regulus at zero degree of Virgo now in the Leo constellation. We also have a trine from the full moon to Andromeda Mirage, which, which is a fixed star in the Andromeda constellation at zero degree of Taurus. And this forms this beautiful grand earth trine, keeping us grounded in this process. Now, we also have an opposition between the Shapley Attractor at two degrees of Scorpio conjunct dwarf planet Haumea to the fixed star Mirage in the Andromeda constellation at zero degree of Taurus. As I, this is an infusion of focus around Andromeda Mirage. And Mirage is uh, associated with energy around strength, around courage, around partnership but also beauty and luck and elegance. So it's a uh, influence at this full moon to rely on a new earth energy coming in through Haumea and Shapley Attractor there. And I want to show you Regulus here on the sky map. Uh, this is the Leo constellation and Regulus is in the front hoof there of, it almost looks like a horse. Regulus is the heart of the lion. It's a very courageous energy that is associated with Regulus. Regulus is also associated with uh, angelic guidance and particularly from uh, Archangel Raphael, which is, has to do with healing, the green ray, but also the element of air. So that is a little bit of a tidbit of what's associated with uh, Regulus. So this was the first part of the second theme. We have more to review in the second theme that I'm going to show next. Here I want to show you a grand cross again, but this time we have Pluto uh, conjunct the fixed star Altair, uh, which is a long-term conjunction between Altair and Pluto here. And opposite now, uh, asteroid Vesta, Vesta at zero degree of Leo. And this is really what activates this grand cross, as you can see here. 
And this grand cross consists of the Pluto conjunct uh, fixed star Altair, Shapley attractor conjunct dwarf planet Haumea, Vesta, asteroid Vesta now at seer degree of Leo and Andromeda Mirage at seer degree of Taurus. So this is a very potent energy that Vesta is kicking in here. This is a growth opportunity to step into Vesta's qualities, which has to do with courage, creative um, self-expression. Vesta is that inner spark that we're asked to uh, connect with at this time. And at zero degrees of Leo, it is an initiation of that inner courage, that inner strength, that inner spark that this Grand Cross is firing up here. And Pluto's influence through Altair here as well. Altair is associated with how we manage that ego versus our true self simply. It's um, taken together. It's an initiation of that um, creative true self, that inner spark that truly from within builds our inner strength. Vesta wants us to have a unique identity. Vesta in Leo is that confident, creative um, expression that we can bring to any situation and any interaction. Now, there is something here at zero degree that gets started. And Vesta has about a three and a half year orbit. I was curious about when uh, Vesta will go into Virgo because that is also the location of, of Regulus, which is also a very abundant, regal uh, type of energy. And Vesta will travel in the sign of Leo now between now and August 25th. And August 25th, we also will have the sun uh, in the proximity of uh, Regulus there, around the first early degrees of Virgo. So this is a um, invitation to spend this time now, between now, June 21st, and August 25th, with um, connecting with that inner spark that creates your creative self-expression, that brings the confidence and self-expression that is unique to you. So if we bring all of this together, yes, you can see the focus here on Andromeda Mirage. And I'm going to show you Andromeda Mirage here next on the sky map. So here we have Andromeda Mirage in the Andromeda constellation. And I highlighted Mirage there in pink. And I also brought in Vesta here, um, where you can see uh, that inner glow and uh, what she represents and the invitation through her initiation here at zero degree of Leo to tap into your inner spark, uh, allowing that to become part of your self-expression, allowing that to be uh, something that you value on a daily basis, making a commitment to express that, to find out and uh, grow that within yourself during this time. And perhaps when uh, Vesta hits zero degree of Virgo and uh, the royal star well, um, Regulus, <laughs> you will feel that inner wealth, that inner strength. And uh, so, yeah, this is definitely highlighting to us that it's an opportune time to um, connect with that uh, inner fire. We can almost see it as an inner partnership with ourselves to go on an exploration here, uh, allowing that to transform us. So yes, this is a clear invitation that there is something new starting here, or we're invited to really uh, devote some time to connect with that inner spark within ourselves, allowing that to transform us. Uh, and perhaps when uh, Vesta hits a uh, zero degree of Virgo and the uh, Royal Star Regulus there at zero degree of Virgo on August 25th, that might be when we feel that inner wealth, that inner strength, that we have grown it, that we're more connected to it. And uh, yeah, so it's it's this beautiful um, invitation to tap into what truly uh, is our unique creative expression and uh, 
what it does for us when we connect to it because it, our inner spark is unique and it is strength. That inner strength can be fueled and sourced from that inner spark within us. So let's take a look at the third theme next. So here we have the third theme that I've called share passions to inspire others. And here we have a highlight on the Lyra constellation and Mercury at there at nine degrees of Cancer now, conjunct Lyra Alatfar. And in opposition to the dwarf planet Quawar at nine degrees of Capricorn. This is a beautiful opposition that speaks of connecting with and bringing in our spiritual connection through music, any type of uh, energetic vibration. Lyra Alatfar is associated with our connection to music, to light language, to um, communication through vibration. And the opposition to Quawar here, Quawar is associated with how we bring in our spiritual practice into our daily life through song, through dance, to the joy of uh, communing with uh, a harmonious uh, energy around us. Kwawar is also associated with uh, bringing in new opportunities. So the association here is very much light, uh, very much joyful, uh, but happening through music as a way to bring in that inner spark or enlighten that inner spark within ourselves. Mercury is here in Cancer to bring that within us. Cancer is associated with the fourth house, which is our deepest inner self. So Mercury is really here to speak to our heart. And Quawar in Capricorn here is very practical, right? How can we bring it into our daily lives and build a practice around it to consistently tapping into that inner spark and inspiration. Now there's an exact sextile between uh, Mercury and Mars in Taurus. They're at nine degrees of Taurus, conjunct Andromeda to Tawin. And uh, Mars is making a trine, of course, to Qualar as well, as you can see there. Mars here in this formation with Mercury and Qualar is that external force, that external in inspiration perhaps that comes in and uh, an action or someone suggests something to us. Andromeda Tatawan is associated with the energy of a spiritual warrior and also uh, very inspirational. So when Mars is conjunct Andromeda to Tauin, that brings in that external sextile to Mercury here, that external influence, that suggestion, that uh, you know inspiration from the outside, perhaps, that uh, is suggesting to us, showing us that uh, inspiration and that we want to bring in. So there is a harmonizing uh, force here between Mercury, Quawar, and Mars to really make this uh, an inspiration, perhaps for others as well. So with that inner strength that we're building at this time, this is the invitation to actually go about and share it with others as well. So here we have the Lyra constellation, and I've highlighted Lyra Alatfar here. Lyra Alatfar is the fixed star that's a little bit north of Lyra Vega. Many of us are more familiar with Lyra Vega as being a very um, feminine polarized star, but with a, a heritage, a galactic heritage around a spiritual mastery. And here we have the Andromeda constellation again. I had to put in Andromeda to Tawan here. Uh, next to Andromeda Mirage, but uh, also the focus here of being the spiritual warrior that goes within to gain more inner peace, inner strength, and inner courage. 
this theme is a clear invitation to step out of our shell and start sharing our practices and passions with others. Now, Mars in this position, activating the spiritual warrior energy is uh, to not forget that in our process of discovering uh, our true self, it also is uh, a great invitation to share with others and how we can harmonize our uh, our own uh, validation of our true self through others and in communion with others. There are expansive new opportunities on the horizon and Quawar's contribution here is to bring it to uh, a practice and an invitation to how we can gather to practice together um, to identify what inspires us as part of that. Many times in this process, we can overthink it. And this theme is uh, bringing us to the practical aspects of sharing and being in communion with each other rather than uh, sitting with it in contemplation too long. So there is a balance here between the seeking within and actually go about and out in the world to share our inspiration and our inner spark with others as well. In summary, this full moon is calling us to step further into our uh, true self and allowing that unique identity of ours to be uh, shared with others. There's clearly an initiation of this connection of what we call our inner spark or life force and what makes us unique. This is um, release also of ancestral karma that may have held us down. Uh, identifications of ourselves, perspectives and perceptions, ideas, assumptions about ourselves that we may not need to hold anymore in favor of blooming inside with inspiration and finding that inner spark. Because once we do, it actually helps us to uh, know what our special place in this world is in this life, that sacred contract that we all came here for to carry out. And the more connection we have with that inner spark, it shows us the way. It um, helps us to know what we are and what we are not. So this is an invitation to uh, work with that ancestral karma and let it go and step further and deeper into our unique expression. The better use influence in opposition to the moon here at this full moon is supporting us to help balance this resilience that we're asked to carry out throughout this process and highlighting also that it's important to keep going, to stay resilient through this process. So as usual, I have a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this full moon in Capricorn energy some more? The first question is, how can you become more resilient at this time as you allow your true you to emerge even further? What does resilience mean to you? This is a, a great question to sit with a little bit because resilience means different for different people. So um, allow that characteristic of resilience to flavor your next couple of weeks here. The second question is, what makes you unique? And this can be a really hard question to answer. But sometimes if you, for example, think of someone that you admire in your life and consider them as a mirror, because you likely have the same qualities as the person you admire. Consider that. Partner with yourself to develop that uniqueness about yourself. Trust it and grow it. The third question is, what do you find inspiring? 
And how can you bring it out? How can you share it? How can you embody it? It's one thing to think about it and be aware of it, but it's another thing to express it amongst others. So how can you incorporate this inspiration, what you find inspiring in your daily life, maybe incorporate it even in a spiritual practice on a daily basis? Let me know how you do in the comments, what you think about this full moon and how it inspires you to stay resilient, how it inspires you to step deeper into your uniqueness and how it inspires you to share with others. Thank you for listening and watching New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There is a link in the description below. Thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful for you showing up here, watching or listening to this uh, podcast episode of the full moon in Capricorn. I will be back soon with another one. Bye.